It's Presenter Search on 3, proudly brought to you by Capitec and Mac Cafe. After weeks of grueling challenges, heartbreak and bloopers, our top six find themselves on the spectacular La Réunion. And with so much to offer on this island, it proves to be the perfect spot to give them each one last shot to film a segment, hopefully impressing the judges. Welcome to the finale of Presenter Search on 3. With the spectacular coral and marine life here in Reunion, it's small wonder that the kayaks here are completely transparent. Now, Ryle has done supremely well in keeping it real throughout all of his challenges. But in this final insert, will he see it through? I love kayaking, I love paddling. I've got a lot of experience back home, especially in life saving. So this is gonna be really interesting. I'm looking forward to it actually. What a fitting occasion to be answering my heart's calling for the beach. Yet our final challenge on Presenter Search on 3. Early morning, we're doing the opening link on Trudeau Beach. This doesn't even feel like a job, man. This is awesome. We're about to explore some of the incredible beauty that this island has to offer in a very unique way. This is Transparent Kayaking. This is the coolest thing I've seen in ages. I've never paddled with such a unique experience before. It's nice and mellow, not too hard on the body, so I can really start to take the island in and enjoy it. I think one of the most important things I'm gonna use in my final challenge is really to be authentic. I wanna really show and bring that friendship and relationship across that I build with my guest, and especially making sure that I share the beautiful experience that I have with the audience. Seb, I see families, couples and friends all enjoying the lagoon. What makes it so popular and I guess so safe? Yeah, the lagoon is really safe because we have no current, no wave and the coral reef protects us to the big uh, fish like shark or tuna. So what sort of marine life can we expect to see out here in the lagoon? We can see many, many fish, sometimes a turtle, uh, some uh, octopus. Oh man, I haven't seen a turtle. I've got tortoises back home, but they don't swim, so I'm keen to see one of those, maybe. <laughs> Seb is awesome. He's a fellow paddler. We get along so well, like-minded as well, so it's really easy, actually. I'm enjoying this. I mean, the lagoon looks massive. It is stretching far beyond what I can see. How big is it, actually? Uh, the lagoon is uh, 11 kilometers long, and uh, we can walk everywhere. Uh, it's uh, really shallow everywhere. Something I've learned over the course of this competition, which I feel is very important and valuable, is to just get to know your guest and bring them out a little bit more. And that's something that's kind of missing in this interview. I really need to get that across here. What is it that's so special to you about the job that you have? I mean, I must say I'm very jealous. To be out here every day is awesome. So when I come on the water, I let my problem on the beach and I just enjoy the, the job. Nailed some great shots in the water and it seems like the wind is about to just throw everything of course. I can't even stand still. Time's against our side. We've got to wrap this up quick. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Julian, I envy you. What has it been like growing up on an island? That's a wonderful life. Uh, I, I, I can't complain. But that's also why we set up this activity. Because when I was a kid, the lagoon was really different from now and uh, I saw a lot of damages uh, as the years went by and that's why I want to protect this fragile environment and educate kids because we have to keep that uh, like this at least. Julian is awesome. He's the owner of the company and what he's doing in this lagoon is something that is so true to my heart. So I love talking to someone like this, very like-minded and both passionate about similar things. Is it possible to maybe borrow one of these so I can take it down to Cape Town? Uh, let's say that for you, uh, it's possible. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Everybody's going crazy, rushing out of the water. It seems like something big's about to go down. The wind is here, the cloud is looking really grey. I think the perfect storm is about to hit. Well, we have to do your length in the wind. Yay. Yay. So we got that. Yes, we got that. In all my years in life saving, I've been blessed enough to paddle on all sorts of crafts, but nothing compares to this experience. I've been given the clear from Julian to take one of his home, but I don't know how I'm gonna get this in my bag. You know what? I think I can pedal this bad boy home. Wish me luck. Next to take on his final challenge is Fez Mkize. The 
The Colonia Turtle Aquarium is a rehabilitation facility for these magnificent creatures. We sent Dr. Fez on a house call to meet the superheroes of marine conservation. I don't think I've ever been as ready for a challenge as this final one. Let's get it going. As a self-proclaimed nerd, I grew up on a staple of comic books, chief of which were the Ninja Turtles. And never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd get to meet my comic book heroes until today at the Colonia Turtle Sanctuary. Bonjour. Coming to Reunion Island and it being predominantly French, I thought I would come and introduce some of my culture just because they're giving me so much of theirs. Let me teach you something. Oh yes, yeah, sure. Turtle in Zulu is Ufutu. In French, turtle is Tortue. Tortue. Ufutu, Tortue, it's like the same, it's similar. Maybe French has some Zulu roots. Maybe, who knows? The sanctuary is absolutely amazing, Mathieu. Could you tell me some of the work you guys do here? We try to make people uh, aware of uh, what uh, treasure, you know, we've got in uh, our ocean. I'm in charge of the care center. So we welcome the uh, injured turtle. We put them in a, a quarantine uh, pool. And after a few months, we can release them to the wild. You nurture the turtles here to the point where you grow two types of trees that they love. Yeah. OK, you've got one the turtle likes to eat. And the other one is the smell. The female turtle knows if it's a good uh, nesting beach or not thanks to the smell. This tree is a smelling good tree. Oh. You know, especially for the turtle. I'm trying to really see if I can smell anything. I'm going to be honest, man. It's a leaf. Is this the tasty tree? Exactly, yeah. The turtles in the water love the leaves up on land. How do they climb up and get these? OK, no, they are not climbing. <laughs> The leaves is just falling uh, into the water. Can we grab some of these and feed them? Yeah, sure. We can try. Bon appetit. These actually look quite tasty. You can try it. Oh. Mm. Maybe uh, it's an acquired taste. I'm the kind of guy who likes to go full in, and that bite is a reflection of it. Uh, whenever you eat something, always take small bites. Ah, uh, yeah. She's yeah. in the size of this bike. Yeah. <laughs> it's about those gains, man. It's all about those gains. Yeah, but now I'm I'm actually not sure if this is poisonous. I'm gonna go check. I think my pulse is increasing and I'm pretty sure my vision's getting blurry. Somebody call a doc. Oh that's me. Let's see if Michelangelo will want it. Trying to feed these turtles is near impossible. So we add a fish. It's a bona fide turtle salad. But it seems even the turtles aren't interested in today's menu. I give up and I throw the leaves in the water and I deliver my link to camera. <sighs> Clearly they like French cuisine. And I mean, they start eating the leaves right there. Come on. Matteo promised me that I would meet my childhood heroes, and here they are. That one's definitely Donatello. And there's Michael. No, that's Raphael. Definitely Raphael. <laughs> These are green turtles, Matteo. What are they doing here? They were collect in the nest because they were too weak. Now they grew up, they are strong, they are ready to go to the ocean, but we are just waiting the right time to do that. And then they're going to go out and save the world. We hope so. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Are we allowed to touch them? Uh, usually, you are not. But uh, under a good supervision, yeah, sure. You can Perfect. try. Yeah. Hey, don't just, tell uh, just shell. Hey, 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 buddy. Let's try another shell. It's quite strong, you know. We have a team handshake. It's official. Yeah. Donatello's accepted me. <laughs> Touching that turtle was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. They literally said it's not done unless under supervision. So I'm going to put that in the bucket list for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's it. That's how we do it. That is how we do. I think it's a good presenter because he made me uh, comfortable, you know. So it was easier for me to speak in front of the camera. 
my final challenge on this wondrous adventure on Presenter Search on 3, and I got to meet my childhood heroes, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. I guess that makes me Leonardo. I hope you've enjoyed watching this incredible journey, and hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. Kawabanga, dudes. Coming up, Mosa takes a leap of faith and Harmony explores his artistic side underwater. If you do just one thing this year, bank better in 2018 with Capitec. When Musa first auditioned for Presenter Search on 3, it was to take her presenting career to greater heights. I suspect that paragliding is not what she had in mind, but luckily for her, in this challenge, she does not have to fly solo. I've never been paragliding before. I'm really nervous. I can literally feel the butterflies in my tummy right now. We're on our way to take off. I'm not wasting any time. I go and speak to Pascal in the bus. He's gonna be the guy that I'm gonna be flying with, my pilot. We're up at the takeoff. The nerves are here, darling. They have arrived. The butterflies, I'm just, whoa, palms sweaty. It's really happening. And then I'm gonna ask you also, what makes, what makes, because I mean, you can paraglide in Cape Town, okay. but what makes paragliding here in okay. Reunion Island special? I'm prepping my guests as a presenter because I want them to know the sort of questions I'm gonna ask and how they're gonna answer them. This is no sport for the faint-hearted. So, Remember, you've got to give it a little bit of a look like, like, are you nervous about it or not? Are you nervous I am, about it? yeah. A little bit or how, how much? Uh, I'll say like 70%, 60%. 70% nervousness. Okay, then we've got to see that 70% nervousness. Okay. And I think use that as well. Play with the, the, the camera and the viewer. Let the viewer know that you're nervous. My director's right. I need to show my audience that I you am, yes, I am nervous. And, uh, you know, if I'm not showing it on my face, I can't say it with my words. This is not for the faint-hearted. So whether you're an adrenaline junkie or facing your fears, paragliding over this amazing view will sure give you perspective of beauty and guts. Pascal, bonjour. Hey, bonjour. Ah, comme elle est? Ben, elle est là. Ah, ah où même? Ah, ben, elle est là. Pascal, I'm nervous. What exactly is paragliding and how does it work? Take the paraglide like a bird. Mm -hmm. The bird, when he fly, he use the feet, they run a lot and they move the wing. We do the same. We provoke the takeoff with your feet and after you fly like a bird. What makes paragliding here at El de la Réunion more special than anywhere else That's, in the world? It's a volcano island here. Yes. So it's a big mountain and we, we can fly a different part. It's an amazing place. And the west coast, we can fly over the sea. Mm -hmm. And someday we can see the dolphins, the nice. sea turtle, and, and this time we can see a lot of whales. Are you ready? Oh, me, yes, and you? A little bit. Okay, so <laughs> follow me, come. Okay. I'm asking Pascal about how to control the paraglide, about how high up we are. I'm actually asking him a lot. It's time to jump, the nerves are gone. I am really excited. Let's do this. Run, 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 I'm in the air, the wind's blowing in my face. I feel like a wonderful bird. Pascal really prepped me for this, so I'm not really panicking. Now I'm sitting back, relaxing and enjoying the flight. I'm seeing houses, I'm seeing the wonderful beach, I'm seeing the amazing scenery. And uh, Pascal is telling me a lot about the historic factors of everything that we're seeing here in bird's eye view. There's a lot going on in my mind. I need to land safely, so I'm listening to what Pascal has to say. My life depends on it, but also I need to deliver a fire closing link. My nose is dripping, and all I'm thinking about is my closing link when we land. Imagine, my golden moment, and now I have a dripping nose. Give me five, Woo! give me five. Yes. That was oh. amazing. Wow, my adrenaline is pumping. I'm up there feeling like a bird. I don't know why I was nervous. Look, I could definitely do that again. You should try it too. I felt confident about my closing link when I landed. It was great, I loved it. You crying, don't No, cry. it's not me it crying, man. I'll come back, I'll come back. Oh, please stay here. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because when a South Africa come here, I fly with them and I love it. They are very, very, very friendly. And first time I fly with Simba, he's really big. And now I fly with Musa. She's small and too funny. I pass a too nice time. I promise you, please 
come here and fly with me. <laughs> Ooh, I've just found out that Pascal was the one that paraglided with Simba on top billing. I'm really honored to be in his presence, but yo, I've got big shoes to fill. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and in the case of Harmony, those words can either be in English or in French in his final challenge. Let's see if he can color within the lines. People are going paragliding, going onto helicopters, and I get drawing underwater. I don't even know what that means. Is, am I drawing under the water or am I drawing the underwater life? How, what, what, what is that? But I hope it's fun. On such a beautiful tropical island, you can't help but take pictures. But how about drawing pictures and how about doing it underwater? Great idea for the opening link. Fantastic, but I think just in your delivery, you've got to give it a little bit of a, a pause for comic effect before you, you give the, uh, the clangor about it being underwater. Yeah. Right. Directors just told me that I need to add more of a gap in order to deliver my punchline. This is some good advice. On such a beautiful tropical island, you can't help but to take pictures. But how about drawing pictures and how about drawing them underwater? <laughs> Julian, first of all, is drawing underwater even possible and how do you do it? Yeah, definitely no problem at all. We manage it by using the board. It's plastic boards and the clays and find a nice coral reef with many fishes, so we're going to be perfect. One of the advantages that I have being on the Reunion Island is the fact that I can speak French, but I have to be smart about where I use it and how I use it. So in my interview, I'm using it strategically in certain areas so that I don't overdo it. Leonie, you seem to be an artist. Tu peux me dire comment tu dessines en dessous de Alors, ben, je prends donc euh, ma plaquette de PVC et euh, donc je me mets dans une certaine position pour être bien stable. Et donc on commence à faire donc le contour. Bon voilà, ça c'est un dessin que moi j'ai fait. On commence à faire les contours de nos modèles de dessin. Puis après on va ajouter la couleur progressivement. My interview with Leonie and Julian is going superb. These guys are amazing. They're giving me whatever I need. They're giving me some good information and some good bits that we can use in this segment. I see you have a lot of masterpieces there, but there's also a blank page. Is that for me? Yes. <laughs> I'm on it for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Allez-y. <laughs> Interview's over. I now know more about underwater drawing, and I'm pretty excited. Time to get into the water. I used to draw when I was a kid, but I haven't done that in a long time, so I hope that nostalgia will help me through this challenge. It's so clear, it's so beautiful. The fish are swimming right in front of me. The coral looks so, ah, oh, it's amazing. This world is amazing. Wow, this activity is really fun. Is this for the whole family? Yeah, anyone can draw underwater from uh, five to 75. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This activity is so much fun that even the ocean wants to help you along so you don't feel like you're the only one drawing. Every time I put my crayon onto the page, the waves move it to one side and then the current decides, no, I want this side. And it's so much fun. But once you get used to it, you start to enjoy the activity a little more. The crew is in the water with me. The tide is rising. The gear is expensive, so we can't afford any accidents. The pressure is on to complete this thing real quick. Wow, this is quite an experience. It's pretty difficult to draw underwater. The waves keep pushing you left and right, but I think I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> Apart from teaching the kids how to draw, what else can the kids learn from this experience? Well, we try to awake them on the flora and um, the fauna of the lagoon to explain them how to protect the environment yeah. and to, to keep our hearths well. <laughs> the underwater life is incroyable, and when you combine it with the drawing activity here at Dessin La Mer, this is an experience worth doing. But alas, it's my last challenge for the presenter search on three, and I think I may draw some inspiration from my fishy situation. And I think I may just have found Nemo and SpongeBob. <laughs> Overall, I think I slayed. The interview went so well. The guys gave me all that I need to make this a world-class segment, and my experience was life-changing. Next, Palissa visits a Garden of Eden, and Tabiso gets a bird's-eye view of the island. Enjoy a moment in between with McCafe. The Sasuta word for flower is palisa, so we thought it would be fitting for our little flower to have the Mascara Botanical Gardens as the backdrop for her segment. Will she blossom in her final presenter challenge? We'll have to see.
If you want to enjoy breathtaking views in an incredible setting, the Mascarene Botanical Gardens and Villa will definitely satisfy your craving. Telling a story of the past and the present, this tourist attraction holds some of the island's national treasures. Dating back to 1794, this historic villa overlooks eight hectares of indigenous botanical garden. Hi Dominic, lovely to meet you. So from my understanding, this villa was designed by a French engineer? Yes, it's uh, Mr. Uh, his name is uh, De Chateauvieux. And um, he uh, went uh, in Rainan Island. Ah, very difficult <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to go to, go to um, saint gilles léo and uh, to work with uh, a family, uh, De Villel. Oh no, j'y arriverai pas. Ça, c'est, j'y arriverai pas. A boat, a boat, I don't think this is going to work. The show must go on, we have to swap out our guests and we're getting our own crew translator and tour guide to step in. I mean, he should be a pro. Hey. From my understanding, this villa was built by a French engineer. Exactly. He came here to work in the sugarcane industry to develop the, all the sugarcane factory that we have here. When he arrived here, he was doing horse riding. He found a nice spot with two beautiful towers amazing view and he's decided to build a house around the two towers. Then this French engineer went on to cultivate this gorgeous garden. Yeah, he has a huge garden. It was 660 hectares at the beginning. And nowadays people are coming to visit and to see how beautiful all the plants are of Reunion. Well, I'm certainly one of those people. So let's go exploring. Okay, let's see. After you. I'm very lucky to have you, Matteo, because I understand that you trained to be a tour guide here. Exactly. It was in 2004. I learned a lot here because it's a beautiful garden where you can find all the plants that you can see only here in Reunion and nowhere else in the world. Hang on, this looks familiar. Yes, actually here it's a representation of the Black Sand Beach that we have in Reunion Island. Black Sand Beaches, is that because of the volcanic rock? Exactly, it's a, a volcanic island, so all of the island was built by the volcano. So you have black sand beach all around. And if you have white sand beach, it's because the reef came later. A good understanding of before and after. A transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Mathieu, you've been such a wealth of knowledge for me today, but come on, you've promised me something unique to reunion. This is here, what we call a pampa. That looks like a very odd fruit. This one is endemic from reunion. You cannot find it anywhere else in the world. That's a famous papa. The papa. Yes. The papa fruit. Yes, and sir. could I eat this fruit right now? Um, not right now. It's too small. And what kind of flavors could I expect? It, it's sweet, but um, you know you have to try it. To, to re I, it's really hard to explain the high taste. I have to find a good segue between his last comment and my final link to camera. Hey, that's sweet. Sweet. And what does this fruit taste like? It's a little bit like breadfruit, but sweeter. Sweet like this visit? <laughs> Thank you so much, Matteo, for showing me around. And I can understand why the pompon fruit has become endemic, because this is a spectacular place to call home. Yes. yes. For his final presenter challenge, we sent Tabiso into the grand mountains of the island. He's not the hiking type at all. He prefers to travel in style. Reunion Island is pure magic, but who would have thought the collapse of a large volcano would turn into something so magnificent you want to experience it or live in it? Now, I've been told that there's only two ways to get there, on foot or helicopter. I'm not wearing the right shoes, so we're taking to the skies. Captain Camille. Yes. Good to meet you. I'm very pleased to welcome you here. I'm so excited. I've never been on a helicopter. Tell me what you expect on our way to the Mafat. Well, just beautiful landscape. All green, made of waterfall, rocks, trees, everything like that. And it's also very steep. Slope are very steep, very high mountains everywhere. What's the charm of getting there via helicopter? Well, the charm of it is that the cirque are very deep. So the mountain are actually higher than you. So it put everything in a nice perspective. And also it's very different. You're here, it's green. You're there, you feel like being on Mars planet. And you're on another place, you feel like being on the moon. 
The landscape on the island are very different from one side to the other and to another one. Oh, can't wait, I'm excited, let's fly. I walked into it really scared. Then it takes off and wow, this is actually really, really nice until we're mid-air and it's starting to feel different because you are now between two large mountains. Why are we flying between these mountains and not above these mountains? This is really breathtaking, eh? It is, yeah, it's just beautiful around there. Camille and I are talking about everything we're seeing from up there. We're talking about the mountains, we're talking about the river, we're talking about the village and the people and how they got there. It's interesting. This village on your right is called Lila Tanye. Everything's going so smoothly. I'm finding comfort in the helicopter. I'm chatting to my new pilot friend about everything. And then he sees a bird and he has a bit of fun trying to dodge it. Ah! Okay. Oh, come on, Camille. Let's be honest. There really was no bird there, was there? A bird? Yeah, I think there was one. But it was safe anyway. I've seen many movies where helicopters just crash between mountains. This better not be one of those. I really thought something was going wrong there. Yeah. And I saw my life oh, flash really? before my eyes. Really? I thought, oh, 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 oh. Here you go. <laughs> Bienvenue in, uh, in Mafat. Oui, oui, oui. You enjoyed your flight? That was an amazing flight. <laughs> Yeah. Camille, it's such an inaccessible space. How did the people find it? Well, the first people were slaves. They were running from the sugarcane plantations. Those who wanted to run away, they were hiding here inside Mafat. Because the access is so difficult, it's hours and hours of walking. So for the bounty hunters to find them was quite difficult. Then they were joined by the white settlers who turned bankrupt because of the slave abolition. So they come here and here, you're far from any problem. You're so far from the bank or the IRS. No problems here, you see? I love it. I you love wouldn't it. enjoy life here. What is the population count here? 700, 1,000 people, something like that. But tourism, there are 200,000 people who come here every year. There is no electricity supply here. How do they survive? You can survive with no electricity, but they have solar panels, so they can deal with that. And also when the weather is very bad for several days, they have generators. So how do you spot a local? Oh, local people, very easy. They have blue flip-flops, <laughs> blue because they are very cheap, they're only two euros. Then on the hiking trail, they pass by you, they're much faster and they're smoking a cigarette usually. This is also exciting for me. I'm gonna take a walk around and I'll catch you later. Yeah, enjoy the little village and uh, we'll meet up here. Tabiso is very nice to talk to. What I like the most, I think, is that he's always smiling. Mafat is just unbelievable. What the people here miss in electrical supplies, they've definitely made up for in architecture and design because the houses are pretty cute and you're walking through them, it's a different world altogether. I can see why people would live here. It's quite peaceful, it's pretty too. Setok Mafat seems far removed from the modern world, but next time I'm looking to switch off and unwind, I'll buy myself a pair of blue flops and I'll be visiting here. I think that I've got 50% chance of making the top three, because there's six of us. Uh, but my chances are good. I'm feeling positive about this. Coming up, after weeks of blood, sweat and tears, the judges deliver their verdict in the grand finale. If you do just one thing this year, bank better in 2018 with Capitech. Hello, presenter search hopefuls. Your 13 week boot camp of television presenting culminates in this night. The judges have been watching everything that you've done in front of the camera and behind the scenes. And tonight, 
lives will be changed. I cannot believe we are here. It's the final moment where we might find out if our lives are about to change forever. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I'm feeling nervous. I'm, this, is, this is what it's all come down to. I wonder what's going to happen. I'm going to hand over to the judges now, who will give you each their final comment individually. Musa, step into your spotlight. The reality of the fact that it's finally come to an end has hit home. It's been a joyful ride. Musa, shame. Your nerves must be absolutely struck. Congratulations on making it this far. You are such a fantastic bundle of energy. You're an absolute pleasure to watch, and it was great to watch you grow throughout the competition. Well done. Thank you so much. Morsa, you are practical, organized, and efficient. And once you learn to tap into your creative ability, you're going to be a great presenter. Well done on making it this far. Morsa, you're quite the fireball. And my worry a lot of the time was too much energy tame the fire. And there's nothing wrong with being all fire, but be in control. And I think you found that spot of being in control. Keep it there. I feel the judges are right. I've really worked hard in this competition, and I'm glad that um, they see right through that hard work. Ryle, step into your spotlight. Ryle, it's been so awesome meeting you, and you're so cool, even your name sounds like a tiger. Ryle. <laughs> <laughs> the best part for me in this competition is learning that the inside is as beautiful as the outside. You have done exceptionally well. You're such a gentleman, and you're really up for any challenge. You have been great. Well done for making it this far. Ryle, you are amazing. When we put you in the bottom three, we asked you to up your energy and really give it to us and break out of your shell. And you've done that. You've found yourself in this competition. So well done. One of my initial worries with you was more often than not good looking boys depend on that I look good and I'm a pretty boy. But you put that behind you and we now take you seriously as a TV presenter. We know you look good, we know you've got a beautiful body, but let not that be what leads you, and everyone will take you seriously in the industry. The judges are really giving me positive criticism. This is making my heart feel quite warm. I'm, you know, so far so good. Tabby Yusel, step into your spotlight. Judges? Oh, Beyonce will be so proud of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, I was concerned about you because you were quite stuck in yourself. And throughout the competition, you have grown and I just adore watching you. Your links are brilliant and you have got such a mean sense of humor. Stay that way. <laughs> Tabi, so Jeannie's so right that we asked you to get rid of the fake voice. You've done that and now you're making me laugh. The link which you did with the swallows in the cave was wonderful. Well done. Tabby saw so my dude, look at you. Initially, I was like, this kid is trying too hard. He, you're, you're, you're almost putting on this, I'm now in front of the camera kind of thing. But now you're rocking your links, man. You should look in the mirror when you get back to your room and just give yourself a pat on the shoulder. You've come a long way and you're looking damn good right now. So big up. I'm feeling really good. It's really nice to know that the judges recognize that it's taken a lot to get to this point. Harmony, it's your turn next. Harmony, you are just so cool. You're the only cold drink in a desert and everybody wants a sip. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this beautiful, smooth voice and this elegant demeanor. You are such a joy to watch. I think you're going to have a very long career as a TV presenter. You have that magic. Well done. Yes, you have that magic, you have the potential for a very long career and you have this ability, you have a gift with words. You can tell stories and you can encapsulate what you're doing in the most beautiful words. Like that expression you used when you were in the sugarcane fields and you referred to the sweet stroke of the sugarcane on your cheeks. That was TV magic. Well done. I love the fact that you've exploited your uniqueness and allowed it to work for you. More often than not, we want to be like other people, sound like other people, and forget that the magic is in who we are. And I think that's why so many people 
love what you do and appreciate what you do because that's who you are. There's no one who's more you than you, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Boom. Receive. Palesa, you're up. Palesa, you are a little dynamite. You are so cute and so sweet, but you've also got a really great sharp wit. You remind me of a little mini me, actually. <laughs> I really love watching you. Every time I do watch you, I find myself smiling throughout your inserts. Palesa, you're such a good sport. When you had the snake around your neck and you still managed to deliver that link, it was absolute magic. And that sharp wit and that charm is what made you the winner on social media, the overall winner on social media for reach, content engagement, and positive viewer sentiment. So well done. Palesa, the morning you interviewed us on Expresso, I knew that, you know what, she, She's going somewhere. She's, she's found herself. You're smart, you think on your feet, easy on the eye. And you were the queen of social media. You kicked everyone else's gluteus maximus. Refer to the doctor if you need an uh, explanation. But uh, yeah, well done. Um, social media loves you and we love you. Getting my final feedback is really emotional. I'm very hard on myself. So hearing such positive critique it's really building me up. Dr. Fez, step into your spotlight. Fez, well, when you walked into that audition room in your scrubs, there was a doctor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and we really knew that we had found something special. You are outstanding. You are funny, you are smart, you're engaging, you're charming, and you're sexy. You're a great package. And Fez, that great package is really working for you. Everybody I meet on the street comes up to me and says, we love the doc. We're so pleased that he's made it so far in the competition. We see him as a role model for South Africa, that positive image which he projects. It's fantastic. Well done. And what I love as a producer is the way that you've integrated props into your performance. Mm -hmm. So when you went to the Blitzbocker captain, Philip Sneeman, and you gave his daughter, Emily, the choice between the stethoscope and the rugby ball, and she chose the rugby ball, that was a magic TV moment. And that's what it's all about. We want you all to create magic TV moments for us. So thank you. Fez, Fez, Fez. Initially, I was worried about you because you had almost this yar but finish about you, but you've toned it down, you've found yourself. You, you, you're giving us fez, and people love you. I mean, if you check social media, everybody carries on about you. So, so the fact that you already have people talking says a lot about your presence in front of the camera. Keep it up and keep working at your craft. The judges have been very giving with their comments. They use the word full package, Usually is a good thing. I'm hoping everything in that package is good enough to win me a spot. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations. Your present moment right now was an unimaginable future just a few weeks ago. And you've all made it to this moment. A lot of people never go out and pursue their dreams. They just think about them. But you've gone out and you've actually done something that a lot of people fail to do. They keep their dreams in their minds. So you need to celebrate this moment. But whilst we're celebrating this moment, it's also a sad moment because 50% of you are not gonna make it. But you must meet triumph and despair and treat those two imposters exactly the same. So for those that are making it through, tomorrow is the first day of your new journey with SABC. You must make the most of it. I think you need to be proud of yourselves. You've gone through the pain, you've gone through the exhaustion, you've gone through the mud, you've been through everything just to get to where you are today. And I really think you should be proud of yourselves. I'm proud of you. I know that your families are proud of you and I know that you've done the best you can do for you just to be here. So congratulations. Coming up, it's time to announce the winners of Presenter Search on 3. Enjoy a moment in between with McCafe.
now. The moment you've all been waiting for. Cue the lights. Contestants, one more thing. Tonight, there will not be three winners. <laughs> hey? What do you mean there won't be three? three? Do you mean less or more? That's more of an opportunity to win. I just know I won top billing. I believe Fresh has more for us. Tubby so. I can feel my heart beat all over my body. You don't have to pack your bags because you're moving to Cape Town. Oh, my God! <laughs> we would like you on Expresso. It's so dreamy. It feels like a dream. It feels like when I've watched the previous season and only I'm here and it's happening to me. Ah, uh, Tubbs, my boy. I've gotten to know you very well. FTT, I'm happy for that. I'm so proud of you, brother. Tabiso is going to be amazing on Expresso. He has the energy, he has the voice. It's a perfect fit. It's a bittersweet moment. I want to be disappointed, but I'm really happy for Tabiso. Congratulations, Tabiso. Jeannie? Now, the next winner will be joining myself and Barney as a presenter on Afternoon Express. And that winner is... Palesa. I think Afternoon Express has a lot of great interviews with some of my favourite celebrities. I'm really wanting to get better at cooking, so hopefully I've got a few cooking segments. Palesa, after everything you've been through, you deserve this. Congratulations, Palesa. And then, of course, there's top billing. Right now, in my mind, all I'm doing is thanking God for the job. I haven't gotten it yet. My name hasn't been said yet, but I receive it. I really, really want this one. Top billings left, I'm going home. <laughs> it is my flagship show to get, if I were to get a show. Did he say my name? You are such a talented group that we decided we couldn't just have one winner for top billing. We should have three. <laughs> <laughs> My chances have just tripled. Please just say my name once. Just once. And the first winner is... Rao, congratulations. You've got to bring it to us on top billing. Thank you. My heart is full with everything. I don't know what to even say. I don't know how to explain this. This is, oh, wow. <laughs> Rao got the spot. It's not me, but if anybody should get it other than me, it's my brother. And our next winner on top billing is... Harmony. Oh, I've got a lovely! African king! My first top billing insert aired on my birthday, which I took as a sign that I was going to get this. And I've been dreaming about this job for the last couple of years. And, God just gave me an amazing birthday present. my face. That's two down. Kudos to Harmony. I always knew he was going to get a top billing spot, but can you say my name? Harmony is top billing. I can't wait to watch him on top billing. Oh, I know Harmony is one of this from day one. I am so stoked that I've got a colleague. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, is down to just me and Musa, and I love her, but it has to be me. The good doctor, Fezile. I just got top billing. I did it, Ma. I know you're sitting at home with Taylo, C. Paul, Zola, maybe even dudes watching this. We did it. Nkize, mavo, fungu nezu kupele, kwaabe, wana kanya masisi swini. We did it, guys. Are you actually kidding me? My boy, Fez, yes, this is perfect. I cannot believe this. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen have done it again. Ah, 
if only Shannon was here, but we're gonna make him proud. I feel like I'm not getting a show and really disappointed. Happy for everyone, but really disappointed because, wow, I left everything to run after my dreams and I hope I have something to show for it. Congratulations, everybody. But I believe Sabu has something that he'd like to add. Congratulations. Um... Mosa, you've really shown that anyone who can dream can really pursue what they want to pursue. And you just being here, I think, shows everybody that it's possible. You don't have to look a particular way. You can just be yourself and you can go for whatever it is that you want to go for and you can actually make it. And for that reason, we would really love you to be a field reporter on the Expresso Morning Show. <laughs> I'm finally relieved. You know, at least I get a show. I'm not going back to South Africa with nothing. I get a contract and I can start working now, tomorrow, whenever. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> My overall feeling of this roller coaster ride that has been presenter search on three is wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, crew. Thank you, judges. Thank you, contestants. Thank you, Musa. And thank you, universe, and all the viewers. It's been real. It's over now, and the work begins. I just can't believe that this is actually really happening. It started off as, go on, take a chance, and now it's a real thing. My life is about to change forever. After this really long and very extensive process, the viewers are gonna find a very earnest me, but a very high energy and informative version of Top Billing. I'm gonna bring a whole new feeling to the show. My SABC3 viewers can expect TV like it's never been done before. I'm about to break the barriers that is afternoon TV and kind of shake it up a bit. I don't think I would ever imagine being here where I am today, especially considering the amount of work that I had to go through and the sacrifices and the countless late nights just to make this happen. It's been such an emotional journey. I've been to my breaking point more than once. This moment right here, it's the reason why I can't put into words. Ah, oh, some present I am, I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, to be honest, like this is not even a plug or anything. Shout out to Presenter Search on 3. Really, I appreciate you guys. Um, I've seen my skills grow from when I first entered to where I am right now. And I really thank you for the great opportunity to meet amazing people, um, to sharpen my skills, my talents, and also to be part of the presenter search on three and also be part of SABC3 and my dream job, top billing. Harmony, I just wanted to say, brother, you've been an absolute pillar. You've helped every single one of us when the times were rough. You're the president. Moose the Goose, a force if I've ever seen one. You are one of the best people I've ever come across, and I really hope you take charge of this expressive thing. Palesa, fortitude, perseverance in such a small package. Keza in love, girl, you know, got you. <sighs> Tabs, FTT, you have been nothing but a gentleman when it came to this competition. Professionalism that I've never seen before. I've learned so much from you. Much love, brother. And speaking of brothers, Big Rob, the man, the morning. Dude, you know. It's just. find them as the brand new faces of SABC3. Tonight, the stage is theirs. We'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye. Congratulations to our viewer, Owetu Nele, winner of the 10,000 Rand gift voucher from Old Khaki. Enjoy your unrestricted style experience. This week, stand a chance of following in the footsteps of your favorite presenter search on three contestant by winning a trip for two to Reunion Island. Spend seven nights in five-star luxury at the Akoya Hotel and Spa, including economy flights from Joburg on Air Austral and car rental for a week, all courtesy of the Reunion Tourism Board. To stand a chance of winning, tell us where the presenter search on three finale was held 
Was it 1. Reunion Island or 2. Mauritius? SMS the keyword reunion plus your name, city and answer, 1 or 2, to 33728. That's 33728 at 1 Rand 50 per SMS. No free SMSs apply. Entrants must be over 18 and hold a valid South African passport. T's and C's apply and can be found on presentersearch on 3.com. Another feel good production. Enjoy a moment in between with McCafe 